Hello everyone, let's look at how to take some old code I have here from my snake tutorial video and make it work on the web. So there's this whole 90 minute tutorial where I, where I show how to make a snake game and it's for total Odin beginners. I will take that and make it runnable inside a web browser. And we will do that using another repository I have. And th this snake tutorial code repository is linked in the description of this video. And we will be using this uh, repository for the web stuff. This Odin Rayleigh web repository is a template for making games that work both on the browser and on the desktop. And there's a little demo here, a live demo you can click and you see it's just like a thing, a funny round cat following the cursor and there's some Ray GUI buttons here and stuff. There are some requirements in order to use this template. One is of course that you have the Odin compiler installed. But the, the big requirement is that you have mscripten installed. mscripten is required by Raylib when running on the web so that it, for example, can turn OpenGL calls into WebGL calls. It's sort of a translation layer in between. And there's a link here for how to install it. So if you click this link, then you just need to do the stuff under installation instruction using EMSDK. So you just do this stuff and then you go down here and you do this stuff as well. And then you are done. And uh, when you've done that, you can clone both the repositories, the Snake Tutorial repository and the Odin Raylib web repository. Inside the Odin Raylib web repository, there are a couple of different uh, scripts. Uh, we will be using this build web batch file here or the sh file if you are on Linux or Mac. The only thing you need to do in order to sort of configure this is that you need to open this and inside this build web, you need to point out the mscript and SDK directory where you put them script when you installed it. If you are on Mac or Linux and you install them script through some kind of package manager, then you might be able to skip this step. Of course, then you will also be using the build web.sh file, not the batch file, but there is a similar uh, configuration uh, variable inside that script, but you might be able to skip setting it because it might already be mscripten might already be in your path. So once you have that set up, then you can test the Odin Rayleigh web template. So you can navigate there in a command prompt and you can type build web and it will run a bit and then it will say some stuff. And eventually it will say web build created in build slash web. And we can see here in the file explorer that we have the build folder here and then the web folder and then you have these different files in here. Now, on most systems, you won't be able to just run index.html because there will be some uh, JavaScript errors due to it uh, wanting to open several separate files. And you can only do that if those come from like the same web server or something like that. It's called a coarse error. So you can go into build slash web. And if you have Python installed, then you can do python -m -http Server. This will run a small web server that serves the stuff in this folder. So if you do that, then it says it's serving HTTP on port 8000. So if you go to that address, localhost, this is your own computer localhost, 8000, then you see now we're running the local version of that example I showed earlier. So now we have something that we can change and put our snake game into. So we will sort of copy the snake game stuff into this repository in order to make it build on the web. Now let's look at the snake code we have downloaded. So inside the snake tutorial code folder, we have these things. The main interesting things is the snake.odin file, which contains the whole game. We can first try running this. Uh, we can open a command prompt to do odin run dot. And you will see that this is the snake game. This is the end the result of that tutorial video. So let's open the snake code. Uh, we pull it into the into here, into the side here. And here's our snake code, this is the code we need to bring into the template. And then in the template we have a couple of different files. So if you open the source folder you have like, these are the main entry points for the desktop and web are in here. Uh, but the game itself is in here. If you compare this to the web template here, then here we see we have some kind of init proc and an update proc. So we don't have a, a main procedure like this. Uh, with, a, with a loop. Instead, sort of the contents of the loop should go into update and the setup that's before the loop should go into init. And this is because the web browser will first initialize things and then it will request sort of animation frames, it's called, which means that it will, whenever it 
uh, needs to redraw, it will call the, the update proc here. And that's just because you can't have a, a loop in a web browser that just runs forever because then the other part of the web browser would, would lock up essentially. So the web browser must ask the game itself when, 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 when it's the right time for it to do so in order to update it. So that's why it's split up in the web browser. So let's just try moving all the snake stuff to over here. So first I will remove everything that's not needed. I will just delete this. I will keep the run flag. These texture things are just the example textures used. And I will delete all this stuff. And this stuff I can keep probably. Well, we can delete that stuff as well. Uh, we can put this stuff at the bottom like that. So these are our free things. You see, now it's pretty nice and clean like that. And then I will just take these things that's before the main loop and put them into here. Ooh, like that. And then I will go into the main loop, the contents of it, select everything, go to down here and put that into update. Just paste it in and then I fix the indentation a bit. And then these things happen after the loop. So that's sort of a shutdown thing. So then we go down to shut down here and we run that. Okay, on top of that, there are some global variables here. These guys, we need to copy these as well. So we take those and we put them just here. Uh, this run thing maybe we can put here. So if we now go back to a command prompt that looks at the Odin Raylib web repository and we run build web, then there might be some errors. I will switch back to the Sublime and just build from in there instead. I, I have the I have a build system set up so I can I can do that. Uh, there's a Sublime project file, but that does the same thing as the command prompt. I just wanted to show that, that they're, they're the same thing. So there seems to be one error here. This is just because I compile with different uh, vetting rules. And then it complains about lots of different things. Oh, I've, I've forgotten to copy all these procedures as well. The restart and place food procedure. So we'll put those in as well. We can put them ah, just here, maybe like that. And then we'll compile again. So we just compile and see what we need fixing. Okay, it didn't like that import because it was unnecessary. And now it complains that these things are not defined and uh, well, they're not used rather. And we can see a problem here that food sprite is just defined as a local variable because it's colon equal. So this is a local variable in this scope, but it's not used. In the old code, it was sort of before the loop and then the loop, you know, could see all those variables. So we can't do like that anymore. Maybe in this case, you could put everything inside a big struct that's some kind of state struct. But in my case, I will just select these and move them into global variables so that the init procedure can set them and then the update procedure can, can use them. So I will multi-select all these and then I will just step back two steps, copy this, move up here and do like that. And these are sprites. So these are rl.texture2d and these are probably rl, rl.sound and this guy is rl.sound2. And then of course this thing here defines a new variable. If you just do equals, you set the value of an existing variable. So we just want to set that one. If we now compile, then there is still some error. Okay, there's some imports missing. So we go to the top here. We can we can actually compare these two. The, the only thing I'm missing here is probably the, the math library. So in the snake code, we have math here. So we copy that in, we compile it. And there you see it says web build created. I still have the web browser running here, so I can just open the web browser again and go to localhost 8000 and see what happens. It Something seems to be wrong. It just says the game is obviously running, but it just came over, over and over. What is missing is that I haven't actually copied over the graphics yet. Uh, so the game is able to run without the graphics. It's probably just textures without anything in them. So I've opened the file explorer here again, and what we need to do is in the Odin Rayleigh web folder, there is an assets folder here and that currently contains these two cat textures that you saw in the little demo file, uh, in the little demo game. So we can delete those two and then we just need to copy the four things. Essentially, we need to copy, you know, these four things here. And that's the, the PNG files here, four PNG files and two sounds. And we copy those into the assets folder. 
And the thing about the assets folder is that if you look inside build the build web, then, then you can see here on, on this line here that it says preload file assets. What this does is that when the mscript and stuff runs, then it can take the assets, it takes the assets folder and sort of put, puts it into the, the, the web build so that you have access to all those things. So anything inside assets folder you have access to when your web game is working and also if you do use the do the desktop uh, build that assets folder is copied to wherever you do your build so you can also use those things the only thing we need to change here is that you must now say assets in front here um, like this maybe you could make a little procedure that returns the correct name or something i don't know but we can do like that and now if we recompile this like that and we switch back to the web browser and play and now we're playing our game in a web browser. You can also make a desktop build of your game. So if you're in the command prompt inside the Odin Raylib web folder here again and run build desktop, then it says build backslash desktop. Uh, what well, the, the build was created in build backslash desktop. And if you go into the file explorer and you go into build desktop, then here is your game. And if you run that, then you can play the game and it uses the same code as the web build. This means that you can work on the desktop build and the web build uh, side by side, kind of. And I would probably work mostly on the desktop build because it's easier to debug and stuff. And then you can, whenever you want to, you can check if your web build still works by running the build web script. So that's mostly it. If you want to know more about how this Odin Raylib web stuff works, then you can look inside that repository in the readme there is lots of information about how uh, how it all works you can also look in the build script there's also some uh, index uh, template html file that you can look into inside that repository that shows how things are uh, set up how the, how the javascript is set up and stuff so you can look into that and finally i also just want to say that i have also put this web build scripts into my Odin Rayleigh pot reload template. So if you with this template you can build your games on the desktop with hot reload and then when you want to make a web build the, the script is already there. So this repository here which is also linked in the video description is does mostly the same stuff as the, the Odin Rayleigh web repository but it does way more which is why I, I don't show this in this video uh, because it will be too many different things at once but with this one you can do hot reloading and then be, make a web build as well when you feel like it but the web build does not have hot reloading it's just for making a sort of a release build that works on the web a final thing you might have noticed here is that this thing doesn't really scale to the web browser that's quite easy to fix uh, there is a thing here that is run whenever the window changes size the only thing you need to do is to change, use the screen height or something here on the camera inside the snake game. And then you probably need to set the window flag at the resizable, uh, if it's called window underscore resizable, this flag. So if you do those two things, you put the get screen, rl.get screen height on the camera and this stuff, then you might get something that adapts to the screen. Uh, to, to the window height of the of the browser. There might be some additional issues that you need to work a bit with, but that's that's the basics of how you do that. Thank you so much for watching, and special thanks to my patrons who support me. And if you want to learn more about the Odin programming language, then I have written a book about it. So you can go to odinbook.com and read a sample of my book, Understanding the Odin Programming Language. And then there is also some links there to where you can buy it in different formats. Have a great day, happy programming, and bye bye!